Hi everybody, I'm Don Smith and welcome to Turnbike Music Garage, the show that gets under the hood of everything music. With the kids going back to school, it's band instrument time. You're going to be out, no doubt, looking for instruments for your kids to play in their orchestras at school. Today we're going to cover clarinets and give you some tips on what to look for when you're buying a used clarinet or potentially renting one. So here we have a typical clarinet. There is uh, really only one kind. It's the same size, same shape. Um, actually, that's not true. There's a bass clarinet that's larger. Um, there's something smaller than this, but generally we talk about clarinet, this is what we're looking at. We have an instrument with a lower horn, a lower body, an upper body, and then a collar that attaches to the mouthpiece. The way these all go together, and the thing to look for first, is the corks. Okay, and the cork forms a seal as you're joining these sections together. And what you want to do is use some cork grease on the cork when you're assembling this. So we're going to cover both what to look for and how to put it together in one shot. You hold the body of the clarinet away from the linkages and then you just press the two together. What the cork grease does is it lubricates and seals the joint. Okay. Now, check the second part, the upper body. The cork on this one looks pretty good. There's no real cracks or chips there nor here, so the corks are in good shape. We'll put a little grease on this cork when we join it together. Now what you're going to look for too, or, or, or notice, is that there's a tab on this section that extends out over the body or over the joint. That is going to attach or join with the tab on the lower body. And what that is, is just a linkage. So as you're putting this together, you line up those two pieces. And so when you're playing the key down below, you'll see that that connection is making a seal up at the top. So as long as that works okay, that's also something to look for um, as you're assembling the clarinet or, or, or evaluating it. The top joint was good too. I'm going to put a little cork grease on that as we attach the collar. That was good. And that makes it seat together properly. And then there's the mouthpiece. Now you can get a new mouthpiece. If it's got a good, if it comes with a good mouthpiece, you can tell it's not chewed up or it's not bitten into or damaged in any way. This is actually a good mouthpiece, even though it's used. It's got a good cork. Uh, and if you're worried about germs, just take it, dip it in hot water, and you're fine. And that goes up top. And there you have a completed clarinet. Everything's sealed together. Now let's take a look at some of the other things that we would be evaluating as we were deciding whether we wanted to buy this clarinet. The first thing is the linkages. You want to make sure that they're all straight. Notice how these levers kind of all line up evenly with each other. If they're bent or they're or crushed together like that, it's taking some damage and, and potentially won't play properly. Here you have four linkages all next to each other. Okay, so we want to make sure that all of those are clean and straight and not touching each other. All of that affects playability. Um, as you're going through, you want to make sure that all the keys move properly. Now I'm just noticing here, as I'm moving this key, this key kind of just flops, if you see that. So that's probably some lubrication needed. Um, that's one of the things you'd look out for. But you want to make sure that all the keys are, are responsive that as you press them down, that things are happening the way they're supposed to happen, that they're not sluggish. Now, I don't know how to explain a sluggish key, but you would know if you push the key down, if it didn't come right back up, it's a sluggish key. And so what you would want to do is have it serviced, have it maybe adjusted or lubricated or whatever so that you solve that problem. I mean, it's hard enough to play the instrument as it is without it fighting the student back. And anything like that that interferes or impedes the playing of the instrument um, just makes the child frustrated. The next thing you want to look for is are all the pads seating properly or if the pads are in good shape. And the way you could tell with that is to just take a look at the pad. Um, you could see a little bit of a lip around that pad. It looks like it's, make a good, looks like it's making a good clean seal all the way around the, uh, the, the chimney stack inside of there. All right? Just open up all the pads and you can see pretty much whether they're eaten whether they're, um, you know, whether there's a problem with them at all. Just go through and hit all the keys and see what pads are opening and take a look at the pad underneath. 
that. I'm trying to figure out how to get this one over here. Usually it's a lower key that you hit that opens a valve up top. And just take a peek. These pads look like they're all in pretty good shape. So from that point of view, um, I think we're okay with this instrument. Other than that one little sluggish key, we're good. Now, this is a reed instrument. And basically what happens with a reed instrument is you've got a reed that vibrates and that's what makes the sound inside the, the instrument. The way the reed attaches is with something called a ligature. So you wanna make sure that the ligature is in good shape um, that comes with it. You'll set the ligature up on the instrument, on the mouthpiece rather, and you'll set that reed up so that it's just, you can just see a little bit of the black over the top of the reed. Okay, that's the good location for the reed. You tighten that down. And that's the instrument that your child is going to play in school. And I happen to have my uh, own mouthpiece, and we'll see if it plays okay. It's been so long since I've played clarinet. I don't even know if I can do it, but we're going to give it a shot. Ready? There you go. This one sounds pretty good. So that does it for this edition of Turnpike Music Garage. Uh, we're at 1485 Black Rock Turnpike in Fairfield. If you are looking to buy or rent one, we do that. If you have one that needs repair, we do that too. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.